Good morning. Today we will be breaking down the United States Marine Corps drum cadences. And I will also share how you can get featured in the first ever USMC Drumline collaborative video. The Digital Drumline Project is a great way for drummers of all ages and skill levels to come together. The Marines Drumline just recorded all our parts this morning, look how epic this is. And you can get featured right here, or maybe right here, or maybe we'll go over here and you'll go up here, I don't know. The details on how to enter as well as the free sheet music and click tracks are linked in the description. Now if you're watching this video in like 5 years from now, well, you missed the collab. Compose a comment if you're watching this in 2025. But I absolutely still recommend downloading and practicing these parts and maybe even have your drumline do it as your cadence. In this video I'm going to be playing all of the parts 10 times by myself like a total boss. And I will be breaking down each of these parts and give you some tips and tricks on how you can learn these beats. If you've ever seen the Commandant's Zone perform live, chances are you have heard us play this cadence. We use this one all the time, and a lot of people have asked me for the sheet music for this, and we are finally able to give it out, so here you go. This cadence is actually quite easy in terms of rhythmic density and rudimental vocabulary. If you are a super noob, I recommend starting out with the bass drum part. And I don't necessarily mean starting out with all five split parts, I mean, you can do that, I'll get to that in a second. But if you just started playing drums, I recommend just playing the rhythms of the bass drum part on one drum. Or you can get creative and move them around the toms of a drum set if you have that. And if you don't quite understand how to read the rhythms on the page, there is the click track you can listen to in the description. I don't really recommend learning like that all the time, but this video project's due on Saturday. Alright, you gotta do what you gotta do to get something submitted if you want to participate. Now the snare and the tender part, you're gonna need a little bit of chops to play these. Specifically, you will need a good double stroke roll, buzz roll, flam accent, and paradiddle diddle rudiments. And I do think that playing these parts will be a good challenge for beginners and will really help you get to that next level. Now if you're a pro drummer, then these parts will probably be pretty easy for you to figure out. But if you're a noob editor, I challenge you to do one of these split screens like I did. I made a two-part video breakdown on how to do the split screen, and I also live streamed when I recorded the parts for this video, so you can go check that out as well to see what I did. The information is all out there for you. All you need is some basic editing software, time, and patience. And don't act like you don't have the time right now, alright? I know you do. If you've been to the Texas State Fair, you have probably seen us play this cadence. Typically, we will only play Troop March C if we need the cadence for an extended period of time, such as during a street parade like this one. In context, we will always start out with Troop March B and go straight into Troop March C and keep it on a loop until we need to do something else. But for this project, we're just breaking it up into two separate cadences and we'll edit them together later. This cadence is quite difficult and not for the faint of heart. There are rudiments out the wazoo. We have flam taps, paradiddles, hertzas, choo-choos, puttadas, five-stroke open rolls, five-stroke buzz rolls, and diddles, all thrown together in a way that will challenge even the most advanced marching percussionist. And the tenor part has all those rudiments as well, in combination with crossovers and sweeps within the rudiments. My personal favorite part is measure five, with these flam tap sweeps going up onto the spock. That's just a really fun and cool part, and there's not enough Spock sweeps in the world, so it's good that we play this pretty often. 
Now this bass drum part, this is really tough to do as a line, and even tougher to do by yourself. Okay, the bass drums are not a very practical instrument at a time of social distancing. So just like Troop March B, you could choose to play all these rhythms just on one drum. You will need a pretty good single stroke roll though to play these fours here. I suppose you could just rig up your drums or some pads to play all the parts, but that could be a little awkward, but I suppose it's doable. But the true pro way to do it would be to make a split screen like this. But you will need impeccable 16th note check pattern timing in order to make that work. And for the bass 2 part, you're gonna kinda need Jedi timing. Like, you just gotta know where these beats go in the upbeats of these hertzes in bar 2, and these upbeats in the hand-to-hands in bar 4. And what you might need to do is isolate these parts, extract the audio, and nudge it over until it's clean. But that's the noob way to do it, and as far as any of you know, I've never had to do that with any bass drum parts. I just play them all perfectly, as far as any of you know. So these little four bar section features, these are not actually part of the USMC drum cadences. We just wrote these out for the sake of the project to give it a little more excitement. And each of these short solos are pretty challenging. However, I think they are all easier than the parts that are in Troop March C, but they are more difficult than the parts in Troop March B. So I think this could be a good progression for you to start as a beginner with Troop March B, then do the solo, and then do Troop March C. But okay, back to the snare feature here. Many of the same rudiments from Troop March B and C are in this one as well. The part that tripped me up the most was the third bar here. You're gonna really wanna practice these first two beats with the metronome. It is a little bit difficult to feel the pulse of these triplet upbeat accents. Also, just a general practice tip, you wanna start learning with the metronome under tempo. I'd say probably around like 80 beats per minute. And then gradually increase the tempo until you get to the tempo, which of course is 116 beats per minute. Some things to take note of for this tenor feature. The rhythms in here are actually quite easy. It is the movement around the drums which makes this difficult. There are quite a lot of crossovers in this, and there is also this helicopter figure eight sweep pattern in the second bar. That can be a little tricky. Just make sure you're staying relaxed and playing in the proper zones as you're moving around the drums. You will also need to have good double stroke roll chops to play the third measure here. And also pay close attention to the details of the first measure. These rim shots are skanks, which means you muffle the head right after you play the rim shot. And the double rights after the skank are muted. Now keep in mind you don't have to play this on a set of tenor drums if you don't have access to one. If you have a tenor pad, that's perfectly fine. You could also get creative and set up some pillows or something. But playing skanks and muffled notes on a practice pad, that's <laughs> just kind of silly because there's, there's no resonance to muffle out. I've already gotten a couple of video submissions that were very, very well done, but <laughs> just seeing people skank on a drum pad, I guess that's just an inside tenor joke. Compose a comment if you think that's funny too. Once again, if you're trying to just submit a video for the project, you can just play this on one drum or rig something up to play the splits on. But I would really, really love to see somebody actually do this with split screen. It'll be a good test to see how good your 16th note check patterns actually are. The most challenging part of this feature is going to be the bass 4 part in measure 3, because you have these 30 second note 2s on the is and the us of beats 1 and 2, followed by a 30 second note 4 run on the end of beat 3. And that's really tough to time all that, especially when you don't have the other people with you. So once again, I challenge you! to do the drumline split screen. You won't do it. You won't. Nobody's gonna do it. Go ahead, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is edit all these clips together, similar to how we're gonna do it for the digital drumline project, and create one long epic cadence.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this video provided you with the information necessary to participate in the Digital Drumline Project or just give you something to practice in general. If it did, don't forget to click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. And also consider ordering a custom t-shirt such as this one. I will leave that link in the description. And have a good morning.